Ceiling Unlimited. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. This new radio program is brought to you by the builders of Lockheed and Vega aircraft. Its title... Ceiling Unlimited. Rear gunner. Hey, you guys! Navigated a pilot. I'm at the waste gun. Where are the others? Blacked out. Oxygen line pooped out. Hey! This crate's beginning to look like a sieve. Yeah, I'd sure hate to get caught in the rain now. Left rudder! How'd you like that, Sukiyaki? Discouraging, ain't it? As it turned back on its homeward journey, a running fight between the bomber and 18 Jap pursuit planes continued for 75 miles. Four ships attacked from each side and were shot down with the side guns. The radio operator was killed, the engineer's right hand was shot off. One gunner was crippled, leaving only one man to operate both side guns. Although wounded, he kept firing, bringing down three more zeros. While this was going on, one engine went dead, another was shot out, one gas tank was hit, windshield smashed, the radio was shot off, the oxygen system entirely destroyed. Out of 11 control cables, all but four were shot away. The rear landing wheel was blown off. Two front wheels were both shot flat. Two shells left gaping holes in the wings, and part of the tail was shot off. But it landed on its own airfield, under its own power at night, broken, crippled, but safe. And it would fly again. This is a true story. There are many like it. It's the story of an American plane that got home. This one was developed and built by the Boeing Company also now being built by Douglas and by Vega. It's called the Flying Fortress. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have an all-star cast. Introducing Snoozy, Cactus Sal, Rose O'Day, Dry Martini, Birmingham Blitzkrieg, Johnny Reb, and Big Punk. Flying men like their planes too well not to name them. Ever hear of a boat or a horse without a name? Rattler, Phyllis, Baby Doll, Berlin Sleeper, Big Stuff, Alexander the Swoops. All flying fortresses. That last name is a little confusing. Alexander the Swoose. A swoose is a cross between a swan and a goose. Just a pet name. Because a flying fortress is just what it sounds like. A fortress that flies. Am I right? They can't shoot our fortresses out of the air. And, brother, they've tried to. We're out riding the best pursuit ships they've got. We come home with a thousand holes, but we come home. She's built like the Brooklyn Bridge. We brought down 13 Nazi fighters over Rouen without losing a plane. Say, we've got Goering so nervous he's eating his medals. Those boys ought to know. They're the flight crew talking. They're over the target day and night fighting fog and fire, riding the murderous sky, slugging it out with the best Hitler and Hirohito have to offer. We can take their word for it. Their testimonials are signed in blood. And did you hear of the flying fort crew who came riding in on the tail assembly? Yeah, the rest of it was shot away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to get acquainted with the flying fortress. It's your plane. It's a great plane. You're paying for it. Your sons and husbands are flying it. This is your personal war. You win or lose, each of you. You are therefore requested to listen. The roots of aviation lead back to poetry and legend and dreamers. The first man to truly experiment on the theory of flight was Leonardo da Vinci, painter, philosopher, scientist, and inventor of the 16th century. He is the man who succeeded in all things but failed in one, to build a machine that would enable man to fly like a bird. Next, we come... Excuse me, Mr. Wales. Yes? I don't think I'm given quite the credit I deserve. If we'd had engines in the 16th century, my airplane would have flown. Leonardo da Vinci, what are you doing at the Lockheed Air Terminal in California? You see, Mr. Wells, out there in limbo, I can't sleep nights hearing these flying fortresses roar by. I decided to come down and see what the century is up to in aviation. You've come to the right place, Mr. da Vinci. I'd be delighted to show you around. We've made some improvements on your own models. May I introduce... Rose O'Day. She's a big girl, isn't she? Ready to go places. Without an escort, too. Yes. Rose O'Day can take care of herself very well. We'd like you to meet the organized miracle of her motors. The timing, the pistons, hot in the cylinders. The valves, the wrist pins, the stroke, the bore. There's a lot of horsepower pulling at the pit. Thousands of horses coiled in the tight cylinders. Ready to roar down the roadway of the sky. Let's hear it. We pull.
put enough life into your mechanical dream, Mr. Da Vinci? We've given your bird a great heart. We've given her claws, too. That's the Roseau Day. And that goes for the others, all the others proud in their sky. We've built this murderous, beautiful plane, Mr. Da Vinci, because we're fighting for our life. We're at war and we must win. If you recall, Mr. Wells, in my own experiments with war machines, I laid great stress on armor. Oh, she's got that too. Armor plate protection. She can go 300 miles an hour and better at 35,000 feet and she can drop her bombs in a smokestack. It sounds unbelievable. The enemy learned to believe it the hard way. They learned to believe the 103-foot wing spread and 73-foot length and 16-foot tail height. There are about 30,000 separate parts that go into a fortress, three and a half miles of wiring and lots of rubber. Are you listening in, Adolf, taking it all down? Well, if you're waiting for the bomb site figures or production figures, you won't get them. We can give you a hint, though. Pencil ready? Rate of production on this plane has increased several hundred percent since Pearl Harbor. <laughs> that hurt, didn't it? Put that in your pipe and choke on it. Arrest is no military secret. You read the communiques, or should we refresh your memory a bit? Oh, well. Railroad yards demolished. Uh, baby. Wrecked air drum. Over the North Sea. Battled off 20 Nazi fighters. Shot down six. No losses. Um, yeah. Fifteen direct hits on yards. Rotterdam. Shipyards blasted. Melt. Demolished aircraft factory. One fort down 13 fighters. Of 88 Nazi planes shot down over Europe during October, flying fortresses accounted for 70. Flying fortresses lost seven. All precision bombing at high altitude, 10 to 20,000 feet. Scientific, Mr. Da Vinci, and very deadly. An old American custom. That's not counting the Pacific area. It was a flying fort that carried MacArthur out of the Philippines. Colin Kelly smacked a Aruna class battleship from a flying fort. There's New Guinea in the Battle of Midway, where flying fortresses helped to scatter a Jap invasion fleet. The Solomons. Yes. They're writing history in the sky. And don't think the Axis doesn't know it. È una cosa terribile! È grande pericolo! Di non vi aeroplani! Di flying fortress! Ikoga nisto noto! Ikado Japan! Irdito! Kutano! Flying fortresses! Silly! Imazana! Darauf! Aufmerksam machen! Die Gefahren dieses neuen Luftschiff nicht so unterschätzen diesen blind Fortress. Yes, it's on their mind. Day and night. They're worried. They've seen it, heard it, tasted it. Over Rouen, Cherbourg, Abbeville, Dieppe, Havre, Utrecht, Rotterdam, Buna, Raboul, and points east, west, north, south. They didn't get much sleep this past summer. They're going to get less from now on. It'll be one long daylight of hell. And the forts will be up there like an umbrella. Say, you, where's your visiting badge? Oh, right in my pocket. Wear them on the outside, both of you. For sure. Healthier. First visit inside the plant? That's right. Lot to see. That wing jig over there is three stories high. And these little grommets. I've got a thousand of them right here in my hand. They're so small you can lose one under a fingernail. Interested in statistics? Very much. Well, it takes 200,000 tools to build a fortress. Truly an amazing spectacle, this assembly line. Just an American way of getting things done quickly, Mr. Da Vinci. We did it with automobiles, now we're doing it with planes. 24-hour shift. Men and women working like bees, joining the plane together unit by unit. Then the motors are miraculously hoisted down, set in place. Quickly, quickly, their hands seem to say. Let's put it together quickly. We're fighting time. They need this plane somewhere. They need our work. They need our skill, our hands. We understand without whips, without fear or panic. We understand as free men do. Your plane is ready, Mr. Wells. Oh, thank you. Mr. Da Vinci, would you like to take a ride in a flying fortress? We're delivering this one to England and point secret. You mean direct? From factory to front with stopover, of course, check oil and gas and water and have the windshield cleaned. I'm ready. Good, but first let's meet the crew. What? All those men? Well, not quite. Eighteen of them are the ground crew and mechanics who know their jobs and keep the plane in vitamin shape. It takes nine men to fly a port. Step out, boys. Meet Mr. Da Vinci. Bombardier, I sit in a plastic glass nose with a secret bomb site and two machine guns just in case. I like the eggs, TNT. Navigator, I sit in back of the bombardier. I shoot the sun and the stars. 
and anything else that comes by. <laughs> uh, listen, Colonel. And you, sir? <laughs> I'm the high man. I watch the instruments, and I bring baby home for what's left of her. Co-pilot. If we're both out, she flies herself home. <laughs> <laughs> and four of us take care of the center of the plane, more or less. Two radio men, two engineers. We also double on brass. You know, the kind bullets come in. Well, that leaves one more. I'm the tail gunner way out in center field. What's your job? I give them the kiss of death. I knock them down with all I got. Wonderful view back there. Not lonely. Ready to go, Mr. Wells. Now, thank you. Up the plank, Mr. Da Vinci. I'm a little suspicious about the center of gravity, but I expect she'll fly. Oh, we're moving, Mr. Wells. We leave the ground. This huge monster of metal, heavier than a building, rising with the ease and liberty of birds. These thousand thundering horses gallop through the marvelous air, and we're free. We defy the sun, the earth's friction. The motors beat like a giant single heart. Man has learned to control the sky. Man is at the helm of his century. Man can make assassins out of angels so that he may live in freedom. He is well armed. He is lightning, riding the air. He is the stroke of thunder. Eastward to the mountains, the Rockies, Nevada, Wyoming, straddling the Wasatch, over the teeth of the Big Horn, the mighty ranges, into the latitude of timber toward the origin of rivers, then the brushwood the green states, the golden states of wheat and corn, Nebraska, Iowa, eastward toward the cities with their thunder of machines and the giant promises over the steel states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, over the coal and iron areas, over homes, Kansas, Missouri. This plane is for you, Illinois, your steel is our wings. We fly for your protection. This fortress is the armor for your avenues. This plane is your promise to the free world. Virginia, Carolina, Dakota, Wisconsin, we fly over you. Take your greeting with us. Bring the name America to the burning lands. We bring the hope that name is. Past the 45th meridian, and the white beachheads, and the blue Atlantic beneath. Speed, speed onward into the night. Oh, flying fortress. Oh, living answer to the eyes of nations. They wait in England, in Africa, in China, in the heroic streets of Stalingrad. The free people wait and watch the sky for your coming. The people enslaved. Pray for your coming. Fly true. Honor to the hands which built you, the workers, the men and women. Honor to our allies who receive these. Honor to the brave airmen who raid daily into battle, who perish in flame and water. Honor to the pioneers of the air, the dreamers, the builders. Honor to all and victory. Time's up now. We've been talking about flying fortresses. Vega is one of the companies that builds them. We're proud of that. Next week, we're going to tell you one of the biggest stories of the war. The story of the Air Transport Command. Please listen. Until then, good night, Americans. <laughs> This program has come to you from the Lockheed and Vega Aircraft Corporations of Burbank, California. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.